What's going on, everyone? After a rather uneventful first film, I mean, in terms of deaths at least, The Stranger's sequel, The Stranger's Prey at Night, leaves us with quite a bit to look at. While an emotionally distraught couple may have been a walk in the park for masked psychopaths, will they stand a chance against two teenagers? That's what we're here to find out. Well, not really, but yeah. Anyways, in today's video, we're going to take a look at everyone who dies and if they could have lived in The Stranger's Prey at Night. The film kicks off with the strangers arriving at a secluded trailer park operated by an elderly couple named Cheryl and Marvin. The strangers knock on the door of the couple's trailer, break in, and slaughter the two. And while we see their bodies later, we do not see their deaths occur, so I'm going to say that Cheryl and Marvin's deaths are unclear. The film then cuts to Marvin and Cheryl's niece, Cindy, and her husband Mike as they pack up for a trip to the trailer park with their kids, Kinsey and Luke. Anyways, the group arrives late so they do not connect with Marvin and Cheryl and instead are directed by a note in the office telling them to stay in trailer 47. Suspiciously, the mailbox in front of 47 is marked with a smiley face identical to one that was on the note. And almost instantly after arriving, a young female stranger knocks on the door and asks if Tamara is home. The couple dismisses her and then they begin talking with Kinsey about her unruly behavior but frustrated by the topic, Kinsey walks out for fresh air. Shortly after, the couple send their son Luke out after Kinsey. The scene then cuts to Luke and Kinsey as they stumble upon a trailer with an open door and wander inside. There they stumble upon the mutilated bodies of Cheryl and Marvin, and they run towards their parents in a panic. Once the four are together again, Mike tells Cindy and Kinsey to go back to their trailer and call the police while he takes Luke back to Cheryl and Marvin's trailer to see what happened. When Cindy and Kinsey return to the trailer, they find everyone's cell phones smashed. Despite this, Cindy tries calling 911 on one of the phones, but the connection is spotty. Dollface then comes out of one of the rooms in the trailer and chases them into the bathroom with a knife. There, Cindy is able to help Kinsey escape through the skylight, but Dollface kicks in the door and stabs Cindy to death before Kinsey can help her out. Now, taking a deeper look at Cindy's death, after Dollface makes her presence known to Cindy and Kinsey, Cindy opens a kitchen drawer looking for something to use as a weapon. The drawer appears to have a whisk, metal spatula, and salad tongs, so nothing too advantageous against Dollface's knife. However, Cindy spends a long time rummaging around the one relatively empty drawer, and doesn't try opening any other drawers or cabinets. I'm sure she could have found a heavy pan or something to use against Dollface with the time that she had. However, it is clear that the strangers had been in the trailer before the family arrived, so they may have removed potential weapons like knives, and we have no way of knowing what the two would have found in the closed drawers. Later on, when the two begin to run from Dollface, they pass a few items that could be used to their advantage, including some plates and lamps that could have been smashed into the attacker's face. Once Cindy and Kinsey are locked in the bathroom, they take a moment to catch their breath and think about what to do until they notice the skylight. They also have a couple of objects in the bathroom that could have been used. They could have used the shower curtain to surprise attack Dollface when she broke in, and while it wouldn't do much damage, it would probably disorient her. Additionally, they could have broken the mirror and used shards of it as a weapon. Once Kinsey is on the roof and Dollface breaks into the bathroom, she and her mom spend too long looking at each other. I can imagine this is Cindy saying her final goodbye as she doesn't think she can win in a fight against Dollface, but I just feel like that's a fight the two of them could win. Sure, Dollface is armed, but there are two of them and one of her. And with the right amount of aggression, I think that they could absolutely take her down. I also feel like Kinsey could have used her position to her advantage here. If she had jumped in on Dollface, perhaps the two of them could have then disarmed her. Now, I'm not exactly sure about this, but in the end, while there are some uncertainties, there are just too many things that the two could have done, but didn't do to defend themselves against Dollface. Because of this, I'm going to say that Cindy could have lived. After Cindy's death, we return to Luke and Mike, who enter Marvin and Cheryl's trailer to confirm the two are dead. Upon seeing their bodies, Mike tries to call the police, but neither he nor Luke have their cell phones, and the landline in the trailer has its wire cut. Then, one of the strangers begins throwing things at the house, and Mike tells Luke to run back to their trailer, but when they go to leave, they find the man in the mask waiting outside. Mike then grabs a gun that Cheryl and Marvin kept in their trailer, and the two make a break for Cindy and Kinsey. 
When they get to the trailer, they find the broken phones and Cindy's body in the bathroom. So Mike shields his son from the scene and they go to their car to drive around and look for Kinsey. While the strangers didn't preemptively destroy the family's car, they throw something heavy at the windshield while Mike is driving, causing him to swerve and crash into one of the trailers. We then return to Kinsey, who has stumbled upon the stranger's truck, and the man in the mask proceeds to chase her with it. She hides in some sort of metal pipe, but then gets jump scared by Pinup with the most oddly dubbed sounding line I've heard in a while. Leave us alone! But we've just started. <laughs> Anyways, after that, the film cuts back to Mike and Luke, and it is revealed that Mike has been impaled by a wooden beam from the deck of the trailer they crashed into. Mike gives his son the gun and tells him to go and find Kinsey, and Luke promises to return with the police and an ambulance. But once he leaves, the masked man returns and enters the passenger seat of Mike's vehicle. He then turns on the radio, and I'm not gonna lie, if I were in Mike's situation, I would really appreciate that. It would definitely help to distract me from the giant wooden beam through my abdomen. So yeah, that'd be nice. Anyways, Mike begs the man to leave his family alone, and the stranger responds by stabbing him in the neck with a screwdriver or some sort of small pick, killing him. Really, the biggest factor in Mike's death is the car crash. So starting at the point where Mike and Luke get into their car, the two are highly focused on finding Kinsey. So Mike probably isn't super focused on his driving. Furthermore, while they are scanning the sides of the road, the stranger that throws a cinder block at their windshield is waiting around a corner. So they probably couldn't really see the threat until it was too late. Basically, as the cinder block hits the car, Mike swerves to try to avoid it and then he overcorrects for his swerve, which causes him to lose control and hit the trailer. Now, I'm not going to sit here and criticize Mike's driving skills as if I'm an F1 driver because, well duh, I'm not, and losing control of a car is a rough situation to be in. I think in Mike's situation, speed probably played a role in the crash, but if I had just found my wife's dead body and was trying to locate my missing daughter, I'd probably be driving pretty fast. So I don't think there is much Mike could have done to avoid crashing, he just got really unlucky. The second and final factor in Mike's death is, yeah, how the man in the mask finished him off with a screwdriver. Anyways, in this situation, Mike can't really move because of the wooden beam in his abdomen. Maybe he could have tried using his hands to go for the man in the mask's face or something, but there isn't really anything he can do. In the end, I just don't see a way for Mike to avoid the car crash or to make the situation better, so I'm going to say that his death is slated. After Mike's death, we return to Kinsey, who runs into a trailer to hide but stumbles across Dollface inside and is stabbed once or twice until Luke runs in and points the gun at Dollface. He orders her to put the knife down, and she does. After that, Luke hesitates to shoot her, so the two run and enter another trailer through an open window. Inside the trailer, Luke helps Kinsey with her wounds, and when she begins hyperventilating about their mom's death, he tries to calm her down with a funny story. Shortly after, the strangers drive their truck into the trailer, and Luke and Kinsey run again, forgetting the gun in the chaos. At this point, Kinsey is too slow with her injuries, so Luke hides her under a porch and goes to find a phone and call the police. At the main office, he finds a landline and calls the police, but while he's on the phone, the call seems to drop, and Pinup finds him. He picks up a mini golf club to defend himself with, and when Pinup runs up behind him on the pool deck, he knocks her down with the club, takes her knife, and stabs her to death. Taking a closer look at Pinup's death, after she turns on the lights and enters the pool area, she runs up silently behind Luke. But he still senses her presence and swings the golf club at her, knocking her down. I can imagine she'd be incapacitated for a few moments, but Luke is also incapacitated as he stands there in shock and slowly approaches Pinup. I can't tell if she's conscious at this time because Luke is able to take her knife away from her slowly, but when he goes to remove her mask, she quickly grabs him. If she was conscious the entire time, she shouldn't have let Luke take the knife, but since I can't be sure of her state of consciousness, I can't use that as a reason that she could have lived or not. After Pinup stops Luke from removing her mask, Luke rather quickly and passionately stabs her. And with the way that he had her pinned down on an empty pool deck, I don't think there is much she could have done, making Pinup's death slated. After Pinup dies, Luke is shocked by his actions and the man in the mask emerges. The two wrestle and end up in the pool where Luke is overtaken, stabbed in the back, and left to die. 
but luckily a few minutes later, Kinsey shows up and pulls him out of the water. Kinsey then runs toward the main road to get help, and a car stops in front of her. It turns out to be a police officer, but as Kinsey's explaining what happened, Dollface approaches from behind and slits his throat. Now, there isn't much to look at in terms of the officer's death, as Dollface isn't around when he first exits his vehicle and checks his surroundings. And after that, his attention is on Kinsey and not his surroundings. However, it is a little bit strange to me that Kinsey fails to say anything about or even react to Dollface as she walks up behind the officer, but I could understand if the weight of the situation at hand and the fact that she's just found someone who she thinks can help her has rendered her unable to pick up on Dollface's presence. However, there is a brief moment during the scene in which she turns and looks directly at Dollface, and that is something that I just can't let go. There is almost no chance that she didn't see the killer in that moment, and even if she was too shocked to warn the cop, she absolutely should have stopped talking or screamed to alert the officer. Anyways, once Dollface is directly behind the cop, she wastes no time slitting his throat. And I want to take this moment to point out the heartwarmingly wonderful continuity of these shots. Yeah, no. Anyways, in the end, while there isn't much the cop could have done to prevent his death, Kinsey absolutely could have and should have noticed Dollface, which would have allowed the cop time to react and defend himself. So I'm gonna say he could have lived. After the officer is killed, Kinsey enters the police car and searches for the keys, but they were on the cop's body, so Dollface uses them to enter the vehicle. She begins slicing at Kinsey, but eventually Kinsey gains access to a shotgun inside the vehicle, causing Dollface to freeze. Kinsey hesitates for a moment, but cocks the gun and fires. She then gets out of the vehicle, unmasks Dollface, and asks her why the strangers were attacking them. When she receives her answer, she shoots again, avenging her mother and killing Dollface. Now, Dollface's death is rather solid, for a lack of better terms. I mean, she takes a shotgun to her stomach, so even if Kinsey didn't finish her off, she'd probably bleed out. However, I do find it weird that she doesn't even attempt to run once Kinsey gets a gun in her hands. It makes sense that Dollface attacked after Kinsey was unable to free the gun, but once she was kicked back and Kinsey was able to get the gun, she had a solid 5 or so seconds to get out of the way before Kinsey shot. Also, considering that Kinsey was defending herself and was only armed with a close-ranged weapon, I can imagine if Dollface ran for the hills, Kinsey wouldn't chase her down. However, I'm also not a psychology expert. Maybe Dollface wouldn't have run. Perhaps the urge to destroy her victim was stronger than any urge of self-preservation. I tried to do some light research, and essentially what I came up with is that psychopathy is common amongst serial killers. However, of course, not all psychopaths are serial killers and vice versa. But I think we can assume that Dollface is a psychopath. Also, psychopaths tend to lack emotion and have selfish tendencies. So maybe the idea that Dollface would leave her victim alone, at least momentarily to save herself, isn't entirely unlikely. However, in a fight or flight situation, like the one Dollface is in, while she would likely have survival instincts, the feeling of fear would be missing from the equation. So perhaps she understood the danger she was in, but didn't have enough time to come up with a logical reaction before Kinsey pulled the trigger. Furthermore, she may have thought Kinsey wouldn't shoot. After all, she had a gun pointed at her earlier in the film, and when she reacted by freezing and doing nothing, Luke backed away and left her alone. So, in the end, while I think someone without psychopathy could have absolutely fled from the gun in fear, Dollface simply couldn't react in that way and probably didn't think that Kinsey would shoot, making her death slated. After killing Dollface, Kinsey goes back to the cop's car, but before she can drive away, she's rear-ended by the man in the mask in his truck. He then repeatedly hits the car from different directions, but on one of the hits, he strikes the car in a certain way, trapping his own vehicle and causing gasoline to leak from the car. Kinsey then uses a lighter she had in her pocket and sets both vehicles ablaze. Despite this, the man in the mask is still alive, and while she walks away, he drives up behind her. Eventually, Kinsey falls and the stranger exits his vehicle with his axe in hand. But at this point, he is severely burnt and injured, so before he gets to her, he seemingly succumbs to his injuries. A little later, Kinsey is able to stop a vehicle passing by in the road, and a woman gets out to help, but runs when she sees the masked man emerge behind Kinsey. Kinsey then hops in the back of the woman's truck and uses a baseball bat found in the truck to hit the man in the mask off. 
and then we see him lying in the road, seemingly dead. Though, I suppose we can't be sure. Now, this guy's death goes on for what feels like an eternity. There are like three separate times in which he should have died, but didn't. When Kinsey lit his truck on fire, causing it to explode, the man in the mask suffered from severe burns, and the glass from the truck's windows blew out, sending shards of glass into the stranger. So after that, despite how long he hung on for, without serious medical attention, he would definitely eventually bleed out. Basically, after the truck explodes with him in it, the man in the mask is as good as dead. However, he had an obscene amount of time to leave the truck between the moment that it got stuck and when it exploded. There are 32 seconds in the film, between when the truck gets stuck and when Kinsey pulls out her lighter and the man in the mask sees what she's doing. Then there is an additional 8 or so seconds before the vehicle explodes. And the man in the mask just sits there accepting his fate. Now, this situation is not nearly as immediate as the one Dollface was in. The man in the mask had plenty of time to try freeing his truck and then realized that Kinsey would cause severe damage to him if he did not abandon it. Furthermore, if he had just stepped out, he wouldn't have been in any danger. Kinsey was no longer armed and he had an axe. So in the end, I think the man in the mask simply had enough time to rationalize those options and leave the truck, meaning that he could have lived. In the end, the woman brings Kinsey to safety and later she and her brother are seen recovering in a hospital. The film ends with Kinsey hearing a toy squeak before someone knocks on the hospital door teasing a sort of, oh, one of the strangers survived situation, but I think it's more realistic that the knocking was a doctor, as they usually knock before entering patients' rooms, and that the toy squeak is showing us how traumatized and changed Kinsey is by the events of that evening. All in all, the stranger spray at night leaves us with eight deaths, and of the dead, three could have lived, two were unclear, and three were slated. Anyways, thank you all for watching today's video. If you have any thoughts to add or any movies you'd like me to take a look at next, leave a comment below. Also, please consider leaving a like and subscribe to support me. As always, be good people, love others, and take care of yourselves. Peace.